Hi, and welcome to part 2 of my video on how to use a tree view in Microsoft Access. I hope you enjoyed the first session in which I illustrated how to create the tree view and load some information into it. In this part, I will go over how we can make our form react to what happens when the user is clicking the tree view or moving around in the tree view with the keyboard. First, I will click, quickly show how the finished product looks so you know what to expect and where this presentation will take you. As you can see, the main form now has a subform with the requirements, and if I click over here, you can see that this form navigates to the specified record. Now, you can't see my keyboard, of course, but as I press my up and down keys, I navigate the tree view, and you can see the record set navigates as well. Now that you know where we're going, I'm going to load up the copy of the database from where we left off last week. The first thing I need to do is create my subform for the requirements. I'll drag the table onto my form, creating a subform which I'll call form requirements. I'm just going to open it in a new window. Okay. Change the text box ID type to a combo box. Give it a row source, select everything from TBL underscore type. And give it two columns and hide the first column like so type requirements uh, requirement ID requirement now the bottom two fields the parent and the sort once the form is ready for publishing I would certainly hide these the user has no need of seeing these, but since this is just a demonstration, I'll simply mark them in red, letting you guys know that these fields are meant to be hidden. I'll take the primary key requirement and make it gray, as I usually do for fields that the user cannot edit. It is locked since it's auto number field. Okay. That was pretty much it. I'll save this, close it. So just rearrange my things a bit the module 1 you see over here that's the module we created last time to load the tree view just going to rename it module underscore tree view and open it now let's take a look at what happened when we added the nodes See, this is where I add the node, specifying the parent, specifying the relationship, and this is the text part. The omitted par parameter here, that is the key part. As you may recall, I said last time that we were just skipping that. Now it's time to start using it, because at the current time, the only information we give the node is the bit of text coming from the requirement. Now we need to give it the primary key as well so we can navigate using the primary key. Now the key field does not take a value starting with a number so it has to be a bit more advanced. The way I like to write it is like this. And record set requirements primary key underscore requirement ending with XML again or HTML markup if you will this works quite fine for me. I'll have a function that I'm going to show you later that makes it quite easy to read the ID. I have to add this bit to the original node up here. I added a node to get the tree you started. So this means that now each node has as part of the information stored within the node the key of the requirement. Now we need to be able to read out this key when we click the requirement start by scrolling to the bottom, adding some text, and then pasting this module, this uh, procedure I have already written, called getXML. This will take an XML string, in which you have specified what element to search for. So, an example, if I write here in the immediate pane, getXML, and we have our XML, some ID, a requirement number, end ID, and I write that the element I want to get is the ID. You can see the code returns just the part between the element tags. 
I'm sure you, if you want, you can read through this code and find out what it does. Now to make it even simpler, I add an extra function, which I call getID, which basically calls the getXML, specifying that the type to get is the ID. Note that the getID as parameter takes a Microsoft Common Control Library node, passes it on the nodex.key, that's the property we just specified a few minutes ago, gets the ID and returns it as a long. This function uses a do standard error message. Another function, I'm just going to paste it as well, so the code will run. It's a very simple procedure. Do standard error message. It takes the procedure name as an argument, composes a string saying an unexpected error, error number has occurred inside this procedure, string procedure name. Gives the error description as well and finally posts it for the user. This uses a global um, parameter, global project name, which I need to specify as well. Let's do that up here, the top. Now I'll add a new module, insert module, call it module constants, public constant global, oops, global project name equal tree view demo specify the type of string there we go now I can use this constant everywhere in my project especially in message boxes where I want this tree view demo to be specified in the same way wherever I use it okay enough talking and showing off functions let's try to get it to work in order for this to work we need to react to some event inside the tree view so let's look at what events the tree view has available. As I click and open my properties, switch to the event tab, you can see there's actually quite limited events available here within the ActiveX control. But if I should click these dots and use this drop down, I can see there's actually a lot more events available. The event I want to use in this case is the node click. Even though it's called node click, this event will fire when I use my keyboard as well. This passes me a node as an object. So what I need to do is get the ID from my node. I'll simply write long ID equal get ID, the function I just showed you, node. So now I have the ID stored in my node, so I need to make my record set or my form navigate to that record set. I'll do this like this, me dot, and I'm going to switch into design view, select my form, open its properties, and give it a good name. CTRL sub form for control sub form. Me dot CTRL sub form dot form. This is the control containing the sub form, and this is the form within the control. In that form, it has a record set, and I use the find first to find the first record that has primary key requirement equals to and my ID. Debug compile looks just fine. Let's test it. So loading my form, and I here see that I forgot to set the properties of my subform. Of course, I want this form not to be data sheet, but to be. That's odd. A single form. There. Close it. Load my main form. And as you can see, as I click through, I now can navigate my records. Now I'm using the keyboard, and you can see that the records are also navigated. Now, one issue that we might run into is that another user creates a record that should go into our tree view, and at the moment the tree view isn't reloaded, but it soon will be. What happens if the tree view is loaded with a record that the that is newer than the record set that we used for our form? Now it wouldn't be visible to our record set since we loaded that 
earlier, but we will be constantly loading the tree view. So instead of using the record set find first, I'll use a slightly different method. Let's go back into the code and replace this with me dot subform form record source instead of record set equals to select asterisks from TBL requirement where pk underscore requirement equal to my ID. Just get the names right. Okay, let's see how this goes. So basically I will be requerying each time I navigate in my record set, I will get the information fresh. There's no need to do a requery down here because as you change the record source, Access will automatically perform a requery for you. If I add it, I'll simply be doing the same action twice. No need for that. Let's try navigating. As you can see, the information is still loaded over here in our tree view, just as we wanted it to be. That was all for this time. I hope you will follow me on YouTube, so you will automatically get updates when I post the next video. If you have any comments, please leave them in the YouTube section. Both the good and the bad, let me know what you want different or something you need explained that I haven't yet explained. Thank you.